Hello and welcome to this video for the 2023 Level 3 Differentiation Paper. Um, so like previous years, um, I don't actually currently have the uh, marking schedules for this exam paper. So any answers you see here are subject to potential errors, which I would appreciate if you see any to leave it down in the comments below. But uh, hopefully that won't occur. And um, I guess get straight into it. So have a look at question one. So we wish to differentiate y equals two square root of three x minus two. Very standard uh, achievable question. So uh, probably the best thing to do here is to rewrite this in terms of a power. So we have y equals to three x minus two to the power of one half. And now we can just use the chain rule. So here's the dy on dx. So we bring the power down. So we have one half times of three x minus two. Uh, take the power down by one, so negative one half. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just three. And that will be three on two multiplied by three uh, x minus two to the power of one half. And this should just be a standard uh, achieve level question. So very, very typical achieve level question uh, every year. So question B, we wish to find the rate of change of the function f of t equals to t squared times e to the power of 2t when t is uh, 1.5. So for this question, uh, we want to find the rate of change. So that's simply just finding the derivative and chugging in the point t equals to 1.5. So the derivative in this case will be using the power rule. So we have f dash of t equals 2, the derivative of t squared, which is 2t, multiplied by e to the power of 2t. And then we're going to add that to the derivative of e to the power of 2t, which is 2e to the power of 2t, multiplied by t squared. And now all we need to do is chug in the point uh, t equals to 1.5. So we have f dash of 1.5, that equals 2. Uh, 2 times t is 3, so 3 times e to the power of 3, plus of uh, 2e to the power of 3 times 1.5 squared. And if we use a calculator, we can find approximately in decimal form. So we have e to the power of 3. All right, so that should be about 150.64. And that's just another typical achieved level question. No surprises there. So question C, uh, the graph shows the curve y equals to 2 on x plus 1 to the power of 3, along with the tangent of a curve drawn at x equals to 1. And the second tangent to this curve is drawn, which is parallel to the first tangent shown in the diagram. So we want to find the x-coordinate of the point where the second tangent touches the curve. Uh, so in this case, well, uh, I think our plan of action is um, finding the gradient of the tangent. And then once we have the gradient, we'll find... Um, uh, we'll find the second second tangent and then I'll be able to find the point. So first things first, we need to uh, find the derivative of the function. So we have y equals 2, uh, 2 on x plus 1 to power 3. So the derivative of this one, we can use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the numerator is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So we have uh, just a negative here. So negative, then we want to find the derivative of the denominator, which in this case is 3 times of x plus 1 squared, um, multiplied by the numerator, which is 2, and that is over uh, the denominator squared. So that becomes x plus x plus power of 6. And now we want to find um, the tangent of a curve drawn at x uh, equals to 1. So we can substitute x equals to 1 into this equation. So dy on dx equals 2. Negative 3 times of um, 2 squared times 2 divided by um, 1 plus 1 is 2, so 2 to the power of 6. So that would be 2 squared times 3. That equals to negative 24 divided by 2. Sixty-four. Okay, and that is about uh, negative three on eight. Just check that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's negative three on eight. Okay. So now, um, what we want to do is, uh, we want to find, we want to substitute the gradient. So that's negative three on eight, since we know that, um, the other the other tangent is parallel, so it has the same gradient. And now we just wish to substitute negative 3 on 8 into our equation for the gradient function to find the x value that which um, the, uh, the gradient of the tangent is negative 3 on 8. So that's 
So simply we have negative 3 on 8, that is equal to everything on the right hand side, which is negative 6 times x plus 1 squared divided by our x plus 1 to the power of 6. So given that x is not negative 1, we can just uh, cancel uh, cancel x squared on the both the numerator and denominator. So we have negative 6 on x plus 1 to the power of 4. So therefore we have negative 3 on 8 times of x plus 1 to the power of 4 that equals to negative 6. So we have negative 6. So therefore we have our x plus 1 to the power of 4 equals to 16. So therefore we either have um, x plus 1 uh, that either equals to positive 2 or x plus 1 equals to negative 2. Since positive 2 to the power of 4 is 16 and negative 2 to the power of 4 is also 16, so we have two possible solutions for x plus 1. Uh, uh, two possible solutions for x plus 1, so two real solutions. Uh, in fact, this will have four roots, but the other four are probably in the complex plane, so we don't need to worry about that. So in terms of the real solutions, we have x equals 2, uh, 2 minus 1, which is 1. And we also have x equals 2, um, negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. So x equals to 1 is already given uh, to us here, so we're not that interested in x equals to 1. So we're more interested in x equals to negative 3. And that will be the x coordinate of the point uh, where the second tangent touches this curve. So. Yeah, so that would be our x coordinates, which is x equals to negative three, and this should be a um, this should be a merit level question, and you should be able to get an achieved, um, I believe achieved probably, if you're able to get somewhere along this lines here to get the correct gradient, then that should be an achieved level grade there. All right, perfect. Let's have a look at question D. So the diagram below shows a tangent passing through the point P, um, P comma Q. This lies on the circle with parametric equations. That's X equals to four cosine of theta and Y equals to four sine of theta. So we wish to show the equation of the tangent line is PX plus QY uh, equals to P squared plus Q squared. Uh, like with any gradient question, okay, the first, first thing you want to do is just find the derivative. So we want to find DY on DX. So in this case, we have x equals to 4 cosine of theta and y equals to 4 sine of theta. So we can have, uh, we can find dx um, over d theta and we can also find dy on d theta. So we have dx on d theta, that's going to be equal to the derivative of 4 cosine of theta with respect to theta. So that's going to be negative 4 sine of theta. And dy on d theta, that's going to be equal to uh, the derivative of 4 sine of theta and that's going to be 4 cosine of theta. Uh, we know that dy on dx, that can be rewritten as dy on d theta multiplied by d theta on dx. And simply that will be equal to, uh, we have dy on d theta, which is 4 cosine of theta. And that's going to be d theta on dx, which is going to be the inverse of dx on d theta. So we have multiplied by uh, negative 1 over 4 sine of theta. So what we actually have here is a negative 4 cosine of theta over 4 sine of theta. Uh, the fours will cancel out, so we have negative cosine of theta over sine of theta. Okay, that's great. Now, we know that this point here is a p, comma q, and we know that uh, that's x and y uh, correspondingly. So we can find an equation uh, of cosine of theta in terms of x, and we can find an equation of uh, y in terms of, uh, sorry, so we can find an equation for sine of theta in terms of y. Uh, we can do that by just substituting uh, p equals to, uh, what was it, sorry, p equals to 4 cosine of theta. And we also have q equals to, um, q equals to 4 sine of theta. Okay, great. Okay, so now we can rewrite, um, sorry, we can rewrite uh, p uh, cosine of theta as cosine of theta equals to p on 4. And we can rewrite q, um, oh sorry, we can rewrite sine of theta, apologies, we can rewrite sine of theta as uh, q on 4. And therefore, since we have cosine of theta, we have sine of theta, we can plug that right back into our equation for dy on dx. So therefore, we have negative of p on 4 divided by q on 4. And that's just negative p on q, since the 4s will cancel each other out. And that will be our gradient. So remember, uh, for any line, y equals to mx plus c. That's for any straight line in the, in the plane. So we have y equals to negative px on q plus of c. 
and we can substitute a point that we know exists on the line, which obviously the line must pass through the point P, Q. Let's substitute that point in to find the value of C. So therefore, Q equals to negative P times of P on Q plus C. And therefore, C can be rewritten as Q plus of P squared on Q. Brilliant. So now we have Y equals to negative PX on Q plus Q plus P squared on Q. And now we can multiply both sides by Q. So we have, um, not P, sorry. Um, so now we have um, QY uh, equals to negative PX plus Q squared plus P squared. And now we can add P, uh, PX on both sides. So we have PX plus QY equals to Q squared plus of P squared. And that is exactly what we want here. So we have PX plus QY equals to um, P squared plus Q squared. So that's uh, as required. And that would be a, that should be a merit level question if you're able to find the correct, uh, show the correct uh, equation for the tangent, that should be a merit. To get an X, uh, sorry, to get an achieved, um, probably if you can find DY on DX, that should be enough for an achieved. All right, let's have a look at question E. Uh, the graph of y equals to x times of x minus 2m squared, um, m is some positive number, that is um, the, total the total shaded area between the curve and the x-axis from x to 0 to x is 2m is given by a equals to 4m to the power 4 on 3. So now the right angle triangle is constructed with a vertex at 0, 0, and on another curve, uh, y equals to x times x minus 2m squared, as shown below. So that's, we see this sum triangle underneath the curve. Show that the maximum area of a triangle is 3 on 8th the total shaded area. Uh, so for this question, um, I think it's quite similar to what you would actually see in um, probably level 2. So like a similar type of question where you're given uh, just some shape underneath a curve and find the maximum area. And well, I mean, they do give us the area of this entire region here. So this entire region we already given is 4m4 uh, on 3. And now it's just asking us, well, uh, what is the maximum area of the triangle is uh, showing that it's the proportion of that area is 3 on 8 to the total shaded area. So in this case, um, what I like to do in these types of questions is just start from the very basics. Okay, so starting from the basics, I mean, like literally the very basics. So we have um, not y, but the area of a triangle is equal to half its base times of height. And now you're trying to conceptualize, well, what is the base and what is the height? Uh, in this case, um, the base would be some x value. So we don't really know uh, what it's called. We can just call it some random x value that, we, that we're trying to find out. So the base is some x value. We do, we're not too sure. And the y value lies on the curve. So the y value is actually uh, given as y equals to x on times x minus 2m squared. Since at this x value, we're going to get a corresponding y value, which is given by this um, uh, the equation of the curve. So basically the height would just be equal to uh, x times of x minus 2m squared. And now we already have our base and our height. So now it's just a plug and chug. So we have a equals to one half times of x times of um, uh, times of x again. So times times of x times of x minus 2m squared. So area equals to one half of x squared times x minus 2m squared. And now we just need to find the derivative of this equation. So we have dA on dx. And in this case, uh, we can probably just use, we can, we can either expand the, uh, the right-hand side, um, x minus 2m, we can expand and then multiply through by x squared. However, I think it's a bit faster just to use the product rule in this case. So the product rule, so for the product rule, we can find the derivative of x squared. So that's just 2x. 2x, so 2 times a half is just 1. So what we end up here is just... Um, x times of x minus 2m squared. And we're going to add that to the derivative of x minus 2m squared multiplied by 1 half x squared. So that's going to be x squared times of x minus 2m. And to find the, in order to find the maximum slash minimum error, so the turning points, remember that's when the derivative is uh, equal to 0. So that's dA on dx equals to 0. And uh, we can just cancel out uh, x immediately. So we have dA on dx equals to x minus 2m squared plus x times of x minus 2m. And that's dividing through by x. 
and now we can expand um expand um if we expand and simplify, so we have dA on dx equals 2, x squared minus 4mx plus 4m squared, added to x squared minus 2mx. So that's going to be equal to 2x squared minus 6mx plus 4m squared. And we can actually uh, factorize this into um, 2x. Um, we can put this one as minus 4m and minus m. So therefore, uh, we either have um, x minus m equals to 0, or we have 2x minus 4m equals to 0. So either x equals to m, or we have um, x equals to 2m. Um, so now the question is asking us uh, which one of these is the maximum area, and which of these is the minimum area. So I think it's rather simply uh, simple to conceptualize that if we have x equals to 2m, uh, that means our x point is here. And pretty clearly, uh, y equals to 0 at this point here, if you substitute back into y, so the area equals to 0. And quite clearly, if I draw any, literally any other triangle inside that area, it will have some non-zero uh, non area. So I think it's pretty clear that this will be the minimum, not the maximum. And therefore, um, x equals to m, that will be the maximum area of the triangle. So now that we have x equals to m, we can plug it back to our original formula for the area. So we have our area equals to 1 half of m squared multiplied by x minus 2m squared. So that's negative m squared. So that's just m squared. So that is m4 on 2. So that's going to be equal to the area of triangle. And we know that the total area was 4m to power 4 on 3. So therefore, the fractional area, so fractional area, that is equal to m4 on 2 divided by 4m4 uh, on 3. So 4m4 on 3, that's going to cancel each other out. So we just have 1 half divided by 4 on 3, which is the same as multiplying by 3 on 4. So this will give us uh, 3 on 8, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So we wanted to show that the maximum area of a triangle is 3 on 8 to total shaded area. So that's our QED and we're complete with this question. Uh, this, sh uh, this should be an excellent level question if you're able to uh, get the correct answer. To get a merit level grade, I would assume that you need to find the turning points, um, the x coordinates of the maximum and minimum. So up to this point here, that could be a merit. To get an achieved, if you can find an equation for the area and find the derivative successfully, uh, so somewhere around here, that should be a achieved level grade there. All right, so let's have a look at question number two. We wish to differentiate f of x equals to x squared on cosine of x. So this is just a simple application of the quotient rule. So we have f dash of x equals two. The derivative of the numerator is 2x multiplied by the denominator is cosine of x minus the derivative of the denominator, which is um, negative sine of x. So that becomes a plus sine of x times x squared. And we're going to divide that by um, the derivative squared, which is cosine squared of x. And this should just be another a very standard achieve level question. So question B, you wish to find the gradient of the tangent of a curve y equals to um, uh, cotangent of 2x at the point where x equals to pound 12. So in this case, again, we just, we're just we just going to find the derivative. And in these types of situations, like if you can't really remember, uh, if you can't really remember uh, the derivative of some of these, like, um, like sine, tangents, um, and for NCA, um, I mean, I haven't, I haven't done NCA in a while, but I assume they'll still give you uh, still give you a formula sheet, so I uh, would recommend that you uh, that you you're able to basically uh, know where everything is for the formula sheet, so you're able to locate things quickly. So that would be one strategy I would say is very important, since you don't want to be searching for things in the exam when you are um, uh, when you're not really sure where where everything is. Okay, so in this case, the we can find the derivative. Okay, so that's dy on dx. That's going to be equal to, okay, so first we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that is going to be 2. And that and the derivative of cotangent is uh, cosecant. So we have minus of 
x of 2x and i believe that's it yeah okay so we have dy on dx that equals to negative sorry negative 2 cosecant 2x and now you can refer back to your formula sheet and then find um what is uh what is the cosecant in terms of our um sine cos sine cosine and tangent so in that case if i remember correctly uh, might have to refer i might have to refer back to the formula sheet myself here because i don't quite remember to be honest so just give me a moment I believe it was one on ten. Sorry. Let's see. Okay. Let's have a look. So we have negative cosecant of two x. Okay. Sorry. Apologies. It's squared. Okay. So negative two cosecant squared of two x. And cosecant is uh, cosecant, I believe. Yeah, that is one on sine theta. So okay, brilliant. So we have dy on dx is equal to negative two on um, sine squared of two x. And now we can substitute the point x equals to pi on twelve into this equation. So dy on dx equals to negative two sine squared of pi on 6. All right, so let's calculate our so pi on 6. If I can. Uh, sorry, guys. Apologies. Okay, so. Sine of pi six. All right, so that's uh, one half. So we have negative two on one half squared, and that equals to negative two on one on four, and that is uh, negative eight. So that would be our answer for this question and apologies that took a while okay so yeah so like i said before like a lot of these stuff you don't really need to you don't really need to memorize it since they give you the formula sheets so as long as you know how to apply the rules and um go from like the derivative of one to the other you can uh, freely use the formula sheet um and a lot of cases um uh, these table of derivatives is something that uh, is not really uh probably it's probably more important to understand the concepts rather than memorizing the exact um derivatives uh, each derivative exactly by heart is probably not as important as just uh, understanding the concepts in my opinion anyway so question c the curve is defined by the equation f of x equals to e to the power of x on x squared plus 2x we wish to find the x values of any points on the curve where the tangent of a curve is parallel to the x-axis so remember uh, if it's parallel to the x-axis that's basically saying um, that the uh, derivative of the gradient function equals to zero. So that's finding all the points where f dash of x is zero. That should be pretty simple. We could just find the derivative and set equal to zero. So we have f dash of x. That is equal to the derivative of the numerator, which is e, on e to the power of x, multiplied by x squared plus 2x, minus the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x plus 2, multiplied by e to the power of x, all divided by x squared plus 2x squared. All right, so now we set equal to zero. And uh, once we set equal to zero, we can just multiply both sides by the denominator. So basically zero is just equal to whatever's on the numerator, which is e to the power of x um, multiplied by x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 2. Uh, we can just divide by e to the power of x, since e to the power of x cannot be equal to zero for any any real values of x. Uh, we can just say um, uh, that there's no solutions for e to the power of x, so we don't need to consider that part. So we're just considering that x squared um, minus 2x minus 2x, so that's just minus 2 equals to zero. 
So therefore, x squared equals to 2, so x equals 2, plus or minus root of 2. So those are the x values where, the, uh, where f dash of x equals to 0, and that's our final answer for this question. Uh, this is typically, uh, this could be an achievable question, honestly, but I'm not too sure. This could be achieved, could be a merit level question, so I'm not too sure, so I'm not going to not gonna say anything else. Okay, so for question D, we wish to find the x values of any points of inflection on the graph of the function f of x equals to 3x squared times the line of x. And we can assume that our points found are actually points of inflection. So we know that uh, points of inflection will have um, the second derivative equal to zero. But there are some cases where um, f double dash of x equals to zero, but it's not a point of inflection. However, the question says that we don't need to consider those cases, since we can just assume that any point found is indeed a point of inflection. So again, this is what this is saying. It's just like, find the second derivative, set equal to zero, give me the solutions. Okay. So f dash of x is equal to, we're going to use the product rule here. So that's 6x line of x um, added to 3x squared on x, which is equal to 6x line of x plus 3x. And we're going to do it one more time. So f double dash of x equals to 6 line of x plus of 6x on x plus 3. So f double dash of x equals to 6 line of x plus 6 plus 3, which is 9. And now we're going to set um, f double dash of x equals to 0. So 0 equals to 6 line of x plus 9. And therefore we have um, negative 9 equals to 6 line of x. And therefore we have negative 9 on 6 equals to line of x. And now we can expen exponentiate both sides. So e to the power of negative 9 on 6 equals to x. And that will be equal to negative nine. Something around x is 0 0.223. And that should be our final answer for this question. Uh, I'm pretty sure this should be at least a merit level question since you needed to find the derivative twice. Uh, to get an achieve, probably if you can find the second derivative, I pretty comfortably say that you can get an achieve um, grade if you can get up to there. Okay, brilliant. Let's have a look at question E. A police helicopter is flying above a straight horizontal section of the motorway, which is chasing a speeding car. The helicopter is flying at a constant speed of 72 meters per second at a constant height of 400 meters above the ground and is attempting to catch up with the car. When the direct distance from the helicopter to the car is 2,500 meters, the angle of depression theta uh, between the horizontal and the line of sight from the helicopter to the car is increasing at a rate of 0 0.002 radians per second. We want to calculate the speed of the car in this instant. Uh, so this question, uh, really, uh, what this question is asking us to do is just to find uh, what is uh, the rate of change of the uh, horizontal, uh, we call it x. So what is dx on dt? Um, and this is just a very standard um, rate of change question. So we are given, uh, we are given, so we can write down our givens. We're given d theta on dt. What do we wish to find? We wish to find dx on dt. So we can rewrite that as d theta on dt. So we want to get rid of the d theta. So we want to multiply by d theta on the bottom here. And we want to introduce dx. So we want to find dx on d theta. And that should be pretty simple since if we have um, this height is 400, we can uh, get an expression for tangent theta in terms of um, x. So we have tan of theta equals to 400 on x. Uh, therefore, we have x tan of theta equals to 400. So therefore, x equals to 400 uh, divided by tangent theta. And now we can find dx on d theta by, di uh, by differentiating with respect to theta. So we have dx on d theta. That's going to be equal to the numerator, derivative of the numerator, which is 0 multiplied by anything is zero. So we're going to have negative of derivative of tangent theta is secant squared theta multiplied by the numerator, which is 400 divided by tangent squared of theta. 
Okay, so that's dx on d theta. So we want to find dx on dt. So dx on dt, that's going to be equal to uh, d theta on dt, which we were given as 0 0.002. That's going to be multiplied by negative secant squared of theta times 400 divided by tangent squared of theta. So now uh, we need to find uh, what is theta at this exact point, which was the car being 2,500 meters away from the helicopter. So what is theta when x equals to uh, 2,500? And that should be pretty simple since essentially what we're doing is we're just um, substituting back into our equation and finding what's the value of theta. So in this case, we have tangent of theta equals to 400 on x. So that's 400 on 2,500. So theta equals to, I'll put in your calculator. Uh, so let's get a calculator. Okay, so we have inverse tangent of 400 divided by 2,500. And that is around 0 0.5158655. Let's just uh, plug that one in into our dx on dt. So we have dx on dt that equals to negative 400 times of secant squared of theta, which is 1 on co, co squared of theta. So we have 1 of, cos, uh, of cosine squared of 0 0.158655 multiplied by 1 on tangent of 0 0.158655. Okay. Tan of answer, that's squared, right? Okay, so that's, um, so that is equal to, so this part is equal to Ah, uh, sorry, just give me a moment. So we have 0 0.0156, 1 divided by, so we have 39.0625 multiplied by 1 on cos squared of um, 0 0.158655. So we have cosine of 0 0.158655. Sorry, so we have zero. All right, so that's about uh, one on one divided by that. So that's about one point zero two six. So that will be times. One point zero two six, and finally we want to multiply by um. What are we multiplying by? Um, dx on dt. Um, multiply by four hundred times zero point zero two. Okay, so times. 400 times 400 times 39.0265 times 0 0.02, 0, 0, 002, okay. Brilliant, okay, so we have our answer, so apologies, that took a while. So that's the answer is um, dx on dt equals to 32.05 um, meters per second, basically, okay. So and this, you know, this answer isn't actually the final answer, since we know that the helicopter is flying at a constant speed of 72 meters per second. Uh, we know that the helicopter is catching up to the car since the angle is increasing. So you can visualize that if we have a stationary helicopter and the car is moving, so let's say the car is here now, you can imagine that um, this angle here is going to be decreasing, right? But since the angle is increasing, that means the helicopter is moving faster than the car. So that means the relative velocity, um, so the, the, the velocity of the helicopter relative to the car is 32.05 meters per second. So therefore, the velocity of the car is that is going to be equal to 72 minus 32.05. And that's about 40 meters per second. So 40 meters per second, uh, that should be our final answer for this question. And uh, this should be approximately, it should be an excellence level question. To get a merit level grade, if you can find, uh, probably if you can find 32 meters per second, that should be pretty comfortably getting you at merit. 
to get an achieved, I'm pretty sure if you can find an expression for dx on dt. So dx on dt expression, that could be an achieved grade there. Okay. Okay, oh, there's another page, okay. <laughs> okay, so question three. So you want to find the derivative of line of x squared minus x to the power of 4 plus of 1. So for this question, we're just going to find the derivative and uh, we're going to find the derivative of the inside and then divide by um, the inside again. So dy on dx equals to 2x minus 4x to the power of 3 divided by x squared minus 4x plus 1. And that's it. That should just be an achieved level question there. So for question B, we want to sh the graph below shows the function y equals to fx. We want to find the values of x where f of x is continuous but not differentiable. So that means um, the, the graph should be continuous at that point. So um, basically you can think of it as um, uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side approaching the same point. Okay, that's continuous but not differentiable. So in this case, uh, the only point that I can see that fits that criteria is this point here. Since uh, it's con uh, the graph is continuous at this point but it's not differentiable, uh, these points here, um, they're not continuous at this point because um, at x equals to negative 2, uh, there's no, uh, the value of y doesn't exist. So it's actually not, uh, they're not continuous at that point. So the only answer here is x equals to 8, I believe. Don't mess that up. Yep. Okay. Part 2. So we find the values of x where f dash of x equals to 0 and the second derivative is less than 0. So remember, when the second derivative is less than zero, that implies we're looking for a maximum, so global ma uh, a local maximum, which in this case uh, is probably this point here. Um, that fits this criteria. So we have x equals to negative four. What is the value of uh, f of x as x approaches to six? Okay, so let's look at the point of x equals to six. That's this point here. And the question we're asking is, uh, Looking from the left and the right, do both sides approach the same point? Uh, answer is no. So therefore, uh, limit does not exist. Brilliant. Okay. It's not too bad there. So question C. Char goes for a ride on the first wheel. As she rotates around, her position can be described by the pair of parametric equations, where t is the time in seconds from the start of the ride. We want to find the gradient of the normal to this curve at the point when t equals to 6.25 seconds after the start of the ride. Okay, so this question again is just to find the derivative and find the gradient of the normal. Uh, shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so we have, we can find dx on dt by defining the derivative of x with respect to t. So dx on dt is, um, sorry, dx on dt is 5 root 2 multiplied by pi on 5 multiply by cosine of pi t on 5, dy on dt, that's going to be equal to uh, 5 root 2. Uh, multiply by pi on 5, uh, negative 5 root 2, sorry, I missed that. So negative 5 root 2 times uh, pi on 5 times of negative sine of pi t on 5. So that is equal to uh, negative, uh, negative uh, just negative root 2. So we have negative root 2 times pi, positive sine of pi t on 5. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so for this question, uh, we want to find the uh, dy on dx, which is pretty simple. We can just use um, the similar idea to our previous question. So that's going to be dy on dt multiplied by dt on dx, which is going to be equal to root 2 times of pi times of sine of pi t on 5 divided by, um, so basically divided by, or we can times by the reciprocal, or we can divide by dx on dt. So that's going to be root 2 times of pi times of cosine of pi t on 5. And that's going to cancel out there. So we basically what we have here is just tan of pi t on 5. So we can substitute t equals to 6.25. So we have tan of uh, pi times of 6.25 on 5. So get a calculator for this, for this part here. Okay. 
Okay, so we have 6.25. All right, brilliant, that's just one. Okay, so that gives us an answer of one. So this, is, so this answer is the um, gradient of the tangent to the curve, but what we want is the normal. So we know that the normal is perpendicular to the tangent, and we know that the gradient of perpendicular lines multiplied to negative one. So we have um, one times by some unknown gradient equals to negative one. Or well, simply, we know that the gradient of the normal, so gradient normal equals to negative one on one, which is uh, negative one. All right, and that's, that's our final answer for this question, and this should be a merit-level question. All right, we've got to speed up a little bit in case I run out of battery. So we want to find the coordinates of any stationary points on the graph of the function f of x equals to 1 on x minus 2 on x cubed, uh, identifying the nature. So this is a very standard question, so we're just finding the derivative, make equal to 0, find the second derivative, and classify the points as a local maxima or minima. So we have f dash of x equals to uh, the derivative of 1 on x, so that's negative 1 on x squared. And for this part, for the second part here, we can rewrite that as um, negative 2 times x to the power of negative 3. So we can rewrite this as 6 on uh, x to the power of 4. And we want to make equal to 0 to find the stationary points. So 1 on x squared equals to 6 on x to the power of 4. So 6x squared equals to x to the power of 4. So 6 equals to x squared and uh, x equals to plus or minus root of 6. Okay, cool. So now we can find the second derivative. So f dab, double dash of x equals 2. Um, so that will be negative 1 times negative 2. So that's just 2 on x to the power of 3. Uh, that's x to the power of negative 4. So negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. And we bring the power down by 1, so that becomes uh, x to the power of 5. And now uh, f double dash of root 6, that equals to uh, 2 on root 6 to the power of 3, minus 24 on root 6 to the power of 5. So we have root 6 to the power of 3. Okay, yeah, that's about 0 0.136 minus... Uh, That's about, uh, that's this one. Oh, sorry. Oh my God. Okay. That's about a negative 0 0.136. So this is less than zero. So this is a maximum point. And we have f double dash of negative root six. That equals to two on negative root six to the power three minus 24 on negative root 6 to the power of 5. So that's about negative 0 0.136 minus negative. And that will be plus 0 0.272. So this is about 0 0.136, that's positive 0, so that is a minimum. And we want to find the coordinates of the stationary point, so we actually have to substitute back into our, um, into our f of x, we just do that really quickly, so f of x equals 2. Uh, we had 1 on x minus 2 on x cubed, so that equals 2. Uh, if we're doing root 6 first, we have 1 on root 6 minus 2 on root 6 to the power of 3. I'm just going to leave it like that since uh, for lack of time. So we have, uh, that's our first point there. So for negative, um, for the negative root 6, we have negative 1 on root 6. And that will be um, and plus 2 of root 6 to the power of 3. All right, so that's our um, points there. And we've classified it as maximum and minimum. So this should be just a merit level question, and uh, let's move on to the last question quickly. Okay, power line has between two poles. The equation of the line y equals f of x models the shape of the power line can be uh, solved by this um, differential equation. Use differentiation to verify that this function satisfies the differential equation. 
Uh, this question looks very scary, but in reality, if you just sit down and realize what it's asking you, it's just asking you to like plug this into this. Does it does it equal does the left hand side equal the right hand side? And that's literally it. So there's nothing there's nothing really deep about this question really in hindsight. So uh, we just need to find the derivatives. So y equals two a on two e to the power of x on a plus a on two uh, e to the power of ne negative x on a. I uh, want to find the first derivative. Okay, that's pretty simple. dy on dx equals 2. Uh, the derivative of x on a is 1 on a. So we have 1 on a times a on 2 e to the power of x on a. And this will be minus 1 on a times a on 2 e to the power of x minus negative x on a. A's will cancel out. So we have uh, dy on dx equals 2. Uh, 1 half of e to the power of x on a minus one half of e to the power of negative x. Okay, cool. So now we can find the second derivative. So uh, we can just uh, really quickly just differentiate again. So we have one on two a e to the power of x on a minus or one on uh, rb plus. So because our derivative of negative x on a is negative one on a, negative times the negative is a positive. And uh, one on a, so we have plus two a here negative x on a. Okay, cool. So now uh, we're saying that a times of d, d squared y d, dx squared, that equals to one half of e to the power of x on a plus one half to the power uh, e to the power of negative x on a. And uh, what's dy on dx? So dy on dx is that expression there. So dy on dx squared, that equals to one quarter of e to the power of um, Oh, let's just let's just multiply it out. Okay, so we have uh, we have one quarter times of um, e to the power of x plus a, so that's two x on a, and plus of one quarter uh, times of e to the power of negative two x on a, and finally we have uh, plus one half times negative one half, so it's actually negative, so plus of negative. Um, two times of uh, one half times one half is one quarter, so that's one quarter of uh, e to the power of negative x on a times e to the power of x on a is just one, so that's that's just that. So this is one quarter e to the power of two x on a plus one quarter e to the power of negative two x on a minus one half, and finally we want to add one. Okay, so one plus dy on dx. What is that? That's um, one quarter e to the power of two x on a plus one quarter e to the power of two x on a. Um, negative one half plus one is uh, positive one half. And now we can rewrite this uh, as, a, as a square again. Instead of having a negative, it will be a positive. So this will just be, uh, what will this be? Oh, my brain. Um, this will be one half of e to the power of x on a plus one half of e to the power of next, negative x on a squared. And if you verify that, that should give you um, uh, this expression here. So that's equal to the right-hand side. Let's have a look at the left-hand side. The left-hand side was, um, uh, why is it a squared? Oh, right, sorry, I forgot the square root, okay? So we have a square root on the, on the right-hand side, okay? So that equals to one half of e to the power of x on a plus one half to the power of e to the power of ne negative x on a. Great, okay, so that should be equal to the left-hand side. The left-hand side was equal to this expression here. So we have, um, yeah, they're equal. So we can say uh, left-hand side equals to right-hand side, and we're done. And this should be a excellence of a question if you can find the proof that the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side. To get a merit level grade, I believe um, probably if you can find both um, the left-hand side and the right-hand side independent of each other, uh, so that's like, for example, finding this, this expression here and this expression here, but you weren't able to simplify it all the way down. That could be a merit. To get an achieved, I believe if you can find the second derivative, the first derivative, you should be chilling with an achieved there. All right, so uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, apologies that it was a little bit rushed at the end there. I don't have my charger with me right now, so I kind of had to uh, really quickly finish before the battery died, but luckily we did manage to get through it and... Uh, if there's any errors, um, like I said, please leave it down in the comments below. If you've got something different, I'm happy to discuss and um, uh, discuss with that in the comments. And I hope to see you all in the next video.